they seek Domi stories. There's another one I want to tell. And in this one, he's not really the main character in the story. Okay? He's more like um, in the background, but he still is, um, you know, his actions in the story still show us things. Yeah, it is, it's, and uh, this story relates more to um, finding a partner. Yeah. This story really comes from a series of stories that involve a character named Iron Hawk. And the Iron Hawk stories focus more on the development of a young boy into a man, becoming a father, and then later becoming a grandfather. And it really teaches a lot. Yeah, it's these stories used to be told to young boys to prepare them for their roles in the society. And our society was very community minded because of the Teoshpaya concept that I explained earlier. And uh that all children are basically raised by the community with all the moms and dads. Yeah, that I that I was talking about. Anyway, in the story, Ironhawk is a young man, and he he gets the urge to want to see the world. Yeah, and uh, he's kind of restless at home, and and so um, he tells you know his family that he's going to look for a wife. Yeah, and he wants to see the world. He wants to travel. So they let him go, yeah, because you know he he's been raised with values and he's a good guy. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's helpful. He understands the law of generosity, uh, which also includes knowing when to say no. Yeah, he's, he knows all these things and and. Uh, so he proceeds, yeah, he packs uh lots of dried um meats because his journey's gonna be a long one. He knows that, yeah. He doesn't know when he's gonna come back, but he knows it's gonna be a long journey. So he's he tries to pack, you know, what he can and he then he goes, yeah, goes about his 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 traveling. And Maybe a couple of days after, you know, he left his camp or his family's camp, um, he's out in the wilderness and he hears this this little boy crying. And it sounds like he's really in pain because the crying is just intense high pitched and like he's scared so he puts down his bag and proceeds to look for this boy and then he uh almost falls into this hole in the ground it's really a deep hole and he, and he caught himself yeah before he fell in from a distance you can't see the hole so it's really tricky there's weeds covering the entrance. So he almost fell in and he managed to pull himself out. And he looked down there and there's a man down there. It's not a little boy, it's a man. He's dressed really nice. And this man's you know, he stops crying and he says, Yeah, I thought I was gonna die. He said, I've been crying for help and I've been here for several days and nobody heard me, he said. So I thought I was going to die. He said, thank you for stopping, he said. And uh, and so um, Iktomi, I'm not Iktomi, Ironhawk says that, uh, well, he says, I'm going to go cut a tree branch and lower it down to you so you can climb up. And 
the the man says, no, no, no. He said, we don't have time. So Ikdomi says, I keep make, getting these names mixed up because I'm telling Ikdomi stories. This is really an Iron Hawk story, so let me try to correct myself here. So uh, Iron Hawk says, well, well, can you explain to me why you don't want me to cut a tree branch? So the man says, um, well, we're kind of, I'm kind of in a hurry. He said, uh, there's a, a chief nearby, and he has two daughters, and he wants to marry them off, he said, to war, uh, good warriors. And one of the daughters is really pretty. And he said, I was uh, down, I was looking for some abalone shells. And there's some down here, he said. And when I reached to pick them up, he said, uh, I slipped and fell in this hole and I couldn't get back out, he said. So there's lots of pretty abalone shells down here. I want to get them and take them um, because I know that pretty girl will like them. And um, so he, uh, Iron Hawk said, okay. So he... Uh, this man was hauling, uh, pushing up these abalone shells, and uh, Iron Hawk would would then grab them and you know put them up on the top. And after all the shells were lifted out, Iron Hawk said, "Here, grab my hand." He said, "I'll pull you out now." So the man grabbed Iron Hawk's hand and he started to climb out. As he got to the top. He really jerked his hand in and caused Iron Hawk to slip and fall into the hole. So the man uh, found Iron Hawk's bag and of food, yeah, and he started to eat Iron Hawk's food up. And then he put those abalone shells in Iron Hawk's bag and he took off. And uh, so now Iron Hawk is calling for help. Yeah, he's, this is way out in the country, so nobody hears him. And so finally, he realizes that he might die down here because it's it's deep hole yeah, and he can't get out. So he starts to sing a death song, thinking that he's going to die. And some warriors are walking by and they hear it, so they look for it and they find him. And they see that he's trapped down there. So these warriors say, we can help you out. He said, "Just he said we have a rope and we'll throw it down and we'll pull you up. So the Iron Hawk says, okay. So after they pull him up, um, Iron Hawk tells these guys what happened. And so these guys said, yeah, we're going to that same camp too. You should come with us and maybe you can find that guy and settle the score he said so iron hawk said yeah i'll do that so they traveled together and they just in a short while they arrived at that camp and it turned out that uh um that man that nice man um was able to win that pretty girl with those abalone shells yeah and so this pretty girl, she had a teepee that had fancy designs painted on it and really colorful things on the teepee poles. And uh, she was really pretty physically, yeah? And her clothes were just nice, nicely decorated with quill work and so forth. And and this nice man, he, he looked nice too, yeah? He really had a nice clothes. And, uh, but uh, Iron Hawk noticed that Something of this man's legs were yellow. His thighs were yellow. So Iron Hawk realized, oh, geez, that's Iktomi. He's in disguise. Yeah? So the the uh, warriors that were there, they decided to just leave, yeah? Because they, you know, they were all going to compete for this pretty girl, but you know, she already married Iktomi. She just doesn't know it's Iktomi, yeah? And uh, Iron Hawk told those men, he said, that, uh, the, the warriors that rescued him, let me say it again, Iron Hawk told the warriors that rescued him that that man 
that married that pretty girl is really Iktomi. Yeah, Ironhawk told him, look at his legs, look at his thighs. So they were looking at him, and they said, oh, jeez, that's Iktomi, let's get the hell out of here. Because Iktomi is known for tricking people. And it's best to just, you see him coming, it's best to just go away, because he's going to lie. Yeah? He's going to say what you want to hear. He's going to really try to win you over. And then, you know, he's going to say, geez, you're a good guy. And, oh, you're the most powerful warrior. And, you know, he's really going to, you know, butter you up. And then when you're not expecting it, that's when he's going to do you in. See, that's why people don't want to be around wherever they see him. So those warriors leave. And Ironhawk says he's going to stay. Yeah? So he asks the chief if he can stay with them for a while. The chief says, yeah, sure. In fact, why don't you eat with us tonight? He said. So Ironhawk says, okay. I haven't eaten in a long time. He said, somebody stole my food. He said. So the chief said, don't worry. He said, there'll be lots of food tonight. So he brings Ironhawk into the teepee. And teepees belong to the women. Okay. That's something I have to say right away. Teepees belong to the women, and they are the law. So what, if whatever, if, if a, you're inside a woman's teepee, you have to do whatever she says. And if you don't, you know, the ekichita, which are kind of like police, but they're more than police. Yeah, they also make sure that you're taken care of emotionally and spiritually too. Yeah, so they're really nice guys. But they will escort you out of the camp and they'll ban you, banish you from the camp if you disrespect a woman inside her own teepee. That's how serious it is. Yeah, So people know that. So this this chief, when I say that he invited uh, Ironhawk into the teepee, that was not his teepee. That's his wife's teepee. Okay? And they got, they had a good feeling about Ironhawk. Yeah, so they were asking Ironhawk, who's your who's your uh, grandparents, where you come from, you know, things like that. And uh, so he told them and as they were talking, they started to feel really good about Ironhawk. They felt that Ironhawk is a good man. Yeah, they felt that Ironhawk was a good man or is a good man. Then... A little while later, the other sister, she's younger, yeah, she came in with the food, and oh, gee, it smelled good, yeah, mmm, roast buffalo, and oh, that smelled so good, so they decided, yeah, that, uh, hey, let's, uh, let's go ahead and eat now, and uh, when this girl was serving the people, and she gave, um, Iron Hawk, some meat. She put, looked down, yeah. She looked at the ground, and she gave the meat to him. And in Lakota tradition, this is a sign, yeah. When a woman does this to a man, she's saying she finds the man pleasing. Yeah, so that's that's very interesting. Today, she, women just, you know. Wear revealing clothes and tight pants and, and uh, show their cleavage and you know and, and just throw themselves at at men and uh, this girl was very respectful yeah which showed that she respected herself so as they were talking. Ironhawk started to feel something coming from this woman, like a warm energy. And he realized, this is the beautiful girl. This is the beautiful sister. She's the one with the intense power of love that when you're just sitting in her presence, you feel good. That's how her power is that she has true beauty 
that it emanates from deep within her because reality begins within. So he started to fall in love with her. Yeah. And uh then uh this girl after the oh, as they were eating, the pretty sister came in, the physically pretty sister came in and she asked if they if if she could take some food for her and her husband Iktomi because Iktomi, she said that her husband hurt his back and he wasn't able to hunt for many days and they didn't have anything so the younger sister said yes take some she said she gave her a bunch of food then uh, the, the the physically beautiful sister went thanked them and she went out to uh, her husband remember they don't know only Ironhawk knows that that's Iktomi yeah, but he wants the people to find out so that they know for sure. Because if Ironhawk says, Hey, that's Iktomi over there you know, they they might think that, you know, that that um uh, he's trying to trick them or something, yeah. So he wants to the people to to realize who that really is and time will tell. Yeah. So then uh as Ironhawk stays with the people, he leads many successful buffalo hunts and therefore provides food for a lot of people and he leads many successful raids into enemy tribes and as a result he acquires a large herd of really nice horses and he as he gets to know the younger sister more he he knows for sure that he wants to he would like to marry her as his wife. So he talks to the chief and he says, I'd like to marry your daughter. And uh, if you if you bless the marriage, he said, I'll give you all these horses and all these buffalo robes. Cause he had a lot of buffalo robes from a lo- a lo- all the hunts that he, he led. Yeah, he was with them for many months. And so he had a lot of horses and a lot of buffalo robes. And so the chief asked his daughter, so would, would you want to marry Ironhawk? And she said, yes, he's a good man. So the chief said, okay, I will arrange for a marriage ceremony. So Ironhawk thanks him, and he gives all these buffalo robes and horses to the chief. The chief then in turn goes from teepee to teepee to make sure everybody has something that no one is in need of anything and he gives the the robes out to people who need it because winter is coming and he gives the horses to people who need horses and everything else he keeps yeah, so he's just a good man he provides for his people Yeah, so everybody was happy now after several months this uh, uh, iron hawk is walking by the pretty sister's teepee and he notices that you know there's rips all over all around the teepee but that woman never did anything to repair it she just sat there at you know admiring her own beauty and her husband's beauty because yeah, remember this is Iktomi but he's in disguise and that couple has kids, and the kids are really naughty. Yeah, they're just honorary, they misbehave, and like there's something wrong with them. See, all these stories, every time Iktomi has kids, there's always something wrong with them. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> excuse me. So, he lead, uh, uh, Ironhawk leads a another buffalo hunt before winter comes yeah and then he provides buffalo for everybody and as they're having a feast um for the marriage they're celebrating into the night yeah and iron hawk goes to um he notices that let me say this again Ironhawk notices that the pretty sister and Iktomi are not at their feast. 
So he goes to see them to see if something is wrong. And when he walks in, um, you know, these kids are just dirty and scraggly, tangled hair. And, and this girl and Ikdomi's clothes are just in tatters. They never bothered to take care of their clothes. They never bothered to to uh, fix the teepee. They they were vain. Yeah, they this woman never learned how to cook. Yeah, she was vain. She didn't want to cook. She she felt her good looks would give her anything or get her anything. And now they were in a really sad situation. Yeah. And uh and so Iron Hawk said you know, hey, why don't you come to our party? He said, there's a lot of food and there's lots of gifts. And uh, Ikdomi was laying there. And, you know, he he's, he's, his good looks were fading now. Yeah, His disguise was, was giving away. And this woman, uh, she was losing her looks too. Yes, and... and um, and so Iktomi said, no, I'm not going to go. And the woman, she got one of them abalone shells and she hit him on the head and knocked him out. Yeah. <laughs> she knocked out her husband. And she said, we'll come, she said. So <laughs> she got her kids and they went with Iktomi. I mean, I, got, I get, keep getting those names mixed up. She got her kids and left with Ironhawk to the feast. As they were coming out of the teepee, Iron Hawk's new wife saw them, so she went over there, and she told her sister and her kids to come with her. She said, come to my teepee. She said, I have some clothes for you. So she gives her sister a new dress and new clothes to the children. And then uh, they go to a stream, and they wash up. Yeah? They, they wash up, and they get clean and comb their hair. And then they all go to the feast. And they continue. So, uh, after that, um, the this, you know, used to be pretty girl, she takes some food back for her husband. After all, it is her husband. And he says, um, to, to, something is wrong, I can't even move. Can you chew it for me and put it in my mouth? So she proceeds to do that, yeah. She starts chewing the food, and when it gets soft, she puts it in his mouth. Just then, Iron Hawk walks by, and he sees this happening, and he just gets disgusted at Ikdomi because he's, he's so lazy, he don't even want to chew his own food. Yeah. So um, she, I mean, so then Iron Hawk walks in and and addresses them, and he says. Uh, you know, this is your last chance. He said, you either come buffalo hunting with me today or I will ask the chief to banish you from the camp because you're not contributing anything. All you do is sit around and do nothing. and You're not even raising your children. You're not providing anything for your family. You're... you're you're, you guys are going to freeze to death because there's so many holes in your teepee. How are you supposed to survive the winter when you're not even contributing anything? Yeah. So uh, Iktomi sits up and then um, he says, oh, my, 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 my toes really hurt. So uh, this uh, used-to-be pretty woman, she wakes up now and yeah? she realizes she don't want to live like this. So she tells Iktomi to leave. He doesn't want to. No, he just broke a rule. Because you remember what I said? The woman says, to you, whatever you're, whatever the woman says, you have to do it. So Ironhawk was the leader of the Ikichita. Remember I said they're kind of like policemen, but they're more. So uh, she told um Ironhawk, get him out. So Ironhawk picked him up by the neck and, 
he told me, started saying, oh, 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 you're breaking my neck, oh, oh. And the woman just kicked him in the ass, yeah, as Iron Hawk hauled him out, threw him out. They took him before the chief, told him, this guy doesn't go hunting, their children are going to starve, and he doesn't provide any materials for his wife to fix the teepee. And she told him to leave, and he didn't want to leave. And so by that time, the chief heard enough, and he banished Iktomi from the camp. So he had to leave. Never come back. Yeah. So in this story, we learn about when you're looking for a partner, that it can't be just physical appearance alone. It has to be some substance there. You saw what Iron Hawk did was he stayed with the people because he wanted to take the time to know this woman that he was that he's married to now, yeah, the younger sister. He wanted to take time to know the younger sister to find out what kind of woman is she yeah and the more that he talked with her the deeper in love he fell with her that didn't sound right yeah <laughs> let me say it again the more that he talked with her the the more in love he fell for her yeah? that he became more in love with her so the more he he knew her, the more he realized he wanted her to be his wife. And she felt the same way about him because she was doing the same thing too. She was checking out Iron Hawk too. She wanted to know, is Iron Hawk a good man? How good of a man is he? And see, she saw Iron Hawk provide food for everybody in the camp. Yeah, and he always helped people whenever they needed help. He did what he could do. He's a good hunter, he's a good provider. She saw the way he was with children that he's really good with children, so she knew he's going to make a good husband, a good father, and a, a good partner. And she was falling in love with him too. She she felt the love coming from deep within him. Just like the way he felt that from her. Remember what I said earlier? That he felt that her beauty was in everything that made who she was. It was not just in her physical appearance. It was in 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 how she was to other people. She was helpful. She's just like him. And the way she was when she walked by you, you just felt good. That is love energy. And her physical, physically beautiful sister was vain. She just focused on her outer appearance. That's all. And it didn't last long. And look at what she attracted. She attracted Iktomi. And Iktomi attracted her. See, like attracts like. Like Iron Hawk and the younger sister. That's an example of how two healthy people, two emotionally healthy people, attract each other. And Iktomi and the used to be beautiful sister, they were both only physically. You know, they were only focusing on the physical attraction and nothing more. They didn't even take the time to know each other. They just married each other because of looks alone. And as time went on, they couldn't keep it up. Yeah, because they were putting on an act. Both of them were putting on an act. And 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 after several, you know, years, they couldn't do it anymore. So they started to realize what the other person was really like and it turned out they couldn't stand each other. That's how emotionally unhealthy relationships are that only focus on physical attraction. 
only on physical attraction. They do not last. And when you try to force it to last, you end up hurting each other and yourself unnecessarily, needlessly. You see what I mean? So this this story really shows, uh, you know, how two healthy people attracted each other and their marriage was good. That lasted a long time. Yeah, they had a beautiful marriage, Iron Hawk and the younger sister. And the vain couple, Iktomi, lost his looks because <laughs> he wasn't keeping his uh, disguise on. And the vain sister, she lost her looks too because, you know, she wasn't taking care of herself. She wasn't taking care of her home. She was vain. She never learned how to to be a woman. She just sat around and said, oh, look at how beautiful I am. Yeah. Now, this story is thousands of years old, but can you see that it's really applicable in today's society? If you want a good partner, you have to first be a good person yourself. And then when you find somebody you might be interested in, you have to take the time to find out how they really are. Because they might not be good. Yeah? For you, I mean. So you have to find out by taking the time to know them, talk to each other, ask each other questions, and then you find out. Yeah, it's just like learning if something fits or not. That's what I like about this story. Yeah, it shows that people focused only on physical attraction, they don't last long because looks don't last forever. Whereas people who are truly beautiful from within, their beauty lasts forever. 